All right, so let's look at uh, confidence intervals, and I've, I've already done some I've done some videos on confidence intervals where sigma is known is known. Uh, I've done one where sigma is unknown, and now we're going to look at confidence interval for a proportion p. So let's consider a binomial experiment, and so the population probability p is between p hat minus e and p hat plus e okay where p hat this is our point estimate p hat is r over n and q hat is 1 minus p hat this is this would be the probability of a success and this would be the probability of a failure okay so the first thing we have to make sure that the number of trials in is large enough. So to check that, n times p hat has to be greater than 5, and n times q hat has to be greater than 5. And then we can calculate e, which is z sub c times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. C is our confidence level, and Z sub C is the critical value for the confidence level C based on the standard normal distribution. Okay, So basically we just have to find all of this and plug it into this to get our confidence interval. Alright, so let's take a look at an example. So it says in a small town with population 20,000, 800 people were selected to get a flu, a flu vaccine. Of the 800 people that received the flu vaccine, 600 did not get the flu. Okay, So 600 of them were successful. They didn't get the flu. Let P represent the probability that the shot was successful. Find a 99% confidence interval for P. All right. So let's go ahead and find p hat, which is r over n. Okay, r is the number of successes, and so the number of successes is 600. So that's 600 over, and then n is the total number that were that received the flu vaccine, which in this case was 800. And so this is going to be 0.75. And then we know that q hat is 1 minus p hat, which is 1 minus 0.75, which equals 0.25. And we also know that n is equal to 800. That's the total. That's the total number of people that received the flu vaccine. Okay, the 20,000. That's that doesn't really mean anything in this problem. That's just telling you there were 20,000 people in the town. We cho We pulled 800 of them out, and we tested just those 800 with the flu vaccine. All right. So now let's see. We've got. Remember, our formula is E equals Z sub C times the square root of P hat times Q hat over N. So we've got P hat, Q hat, and N. Now we need Z sub C. Okay. All right, so we want a 99% confidence interval for P. Now, the the best thing to do is draw, oh, I'm sorry, and also we need to make sure that n times p hat, okay, so that's 800 times, and p hat is 0.75, and that is equal to 600, which that is greater than 5, and then n times q hat which is 800 times 0.25 and 
and that is 200, which is greater than 5. So both are greater than 5, so we can use the standard normal curve to get our z sub c. Okay. All right, now let's let's draw a picture. We want a 99% confidence interval. So that means this is 0.99. So what do we have left over? We have 0 0.01 left over. If you do 1, 1 minus 0.99, that's going to be 0 0.01. So the 0 0.01 is the area of this and this added together. So if we do the 0 0.01 over 2, that is 0 0.005. So this is 0 0.005 and this is 0 0.005. All right. Now, to go find our z sub c, we need this z value is our z sub c. So if you notice the area to the left of this, okay, the area to the left is the 0.99 plus the 0.005. and that gives us 0.995. Okay? That's the that's the area to the left of this z sub c that we're looking for. So, let's pull up the standard normal curve. Okay? Well, that's from an earlier problem. All right. So, it was 0.995 that's what we're looking for. So let's see. Let's find 0.995. So, well, you can see that it's right around in here somewhere. There's not exactly a 0.995. Here's 0.9951 and 0.9949. All right, so you know we we can use on a on a confidence interval. I would go to the larger one, so this would be two point five eight. Okay, so you have to look up that that point nine nine five in here. That's the probability, and we need the z-score for that area under the curve, or the probability, 2.58, okay? And also, let's see, I think, yeah, this one has a table, confidence intervals. These are your critical values, z sub c. You know, some of these, you know, yours would, you know, most of them would probably have the 99%. And see, they give you the critical value here, the 2.58. Okay. But if they don't give it to you over here, or your teacher doesn't let you use this, well, you know how to go look it up now. Okay. So that would be our, this would be our Z sub C. All right, so let's go back to our problem. So we get z sub c is 2.58. Just remember your your confidence interval, the 99%, that's here in the middle, and then 1 minus the 0.99 is 0 0.01. That's what's left over. And you have and so that's this area and this area combined, and since these are the same because this is symmetrical. It's this area is half of this and this area is half of this. So if we take this area and this area, add them together, that will give us the area to the left of this. Okay? And That's what these numbers are. These numbers are the area to the left. See, the areas to the left of the z-score. 
okay and this is the z-score that has this area to the left of it all right so now we need to calculate e so e is equal to z sub c times the square root of p hat times q hat over n so that's uh, so that would be 2.58 times the square root of 0 0.75 times 0 0.25 over n and in this case n was 800 let me get this out of the way and that would be 0 0.0395 when we punch it into our calculator all right so now our interval is p hat minus e to p hat plus e and I know in the formula back there I had p hat minus e less than p less than p hat plus e and all I did this is the same thing all I did instead of writing it as an inequality I wrote it as an interval okay that's all all right well we know that p hat is 0.75 so that would be 0.75 minus e which is 0 0.0395 to 0.75 plus 0 0.0395 Alright, so this is our interval, or, you know, we could say 71.05% to 78.95%. So we can say with 99% confidence that the number of successful flu vaccines would be 71.05 to 79.95 percent of the entire population of the 20,000 okay all right so I'm gonna do another video of this uh, I may do the same problem uh, but I will do this again using Excel okay I'll show you how to set it up in Excel and everything and I also have some I have the videos on where Sigma is known, Sigma is unknown. Um, they're worked out by hand. And then I will also do those in uh, with an Excel video. I mean, a video using Excel on those as well. Okay. All right, so I hope this helped. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.